Great. So good morning, everyone. My name is Alexandra Cookson. I am the data quality trainer for the Maine Department of Education Medems Help Desk. Um, and I'm joined today by Pamela Ford Taylor um, to instruct about the Neo Home Instruction Module. Um, and so this report it will go over some of the uh, navigation, what you can find there. Um, I'll go through a slideshow. The slides that we go through today will be available at the end of our session. And um, any questions about Neo Home Instruction, Pamela will be able to answer um, in, the most, in the most depth for you. So um, feel free to ask us any questions as we go and we'll go ahead and get started. Before we get into the report, I just wanted to go through very quickly some of the upcoming reports that we have due in May and June. So we'll have a webinar next week on the end of year enrollments. Um, that will be at 10 o'clock on Tuesday, the 23rd. And another webinar on the 31st at 10 for end of year report certification. So those are two different um, webinars that will be available for everyone. Um, ESCA demographics report in Maine schools are open. Um, so you should be able to get in there and get started with those reports if you feel, um, if you want to get started on them. In June, ESEA demographics report will be due on this 15th. Maine schools application is due this uh, 15th. You can, uh, I don't know why I put the due date there. You can actually complete it later on, especially if you have a superintendent who um, is starting on the 1st of um, July. So feel free to kind of put that one off if you want to have them sign off on the future reports. Um, end of year truancy behavior bullying certifications are all due um, in, or started and due in June. And exits of student enrollments need to be done in synergy um, at the close of the school year. To navigate for instructions on the Help Desk website, you'll find the instructions for navigating the NEO Home Instruction Module on the Data Instruction Reportings tile. And once you're in that tile, you'll see Superintendent Instructions for Home Instruction Portal. This was updated last week, so it should be up to date, ready to go, um, if you would like to get started with it, all of the new functionality. These are just a few of the resources. Um, these will all be available. Um, they're all hyperlinked in the slideshow, so you can feel free to use them um, at the end of our meeting, at the end of our webinar, to be able to go through and find all of these resources um, on different web pages um, that Pam has put together for us. Pam, did you want to say any more about this section? Um. No, it's it's no, I think you've okay. you've covered it. Thank you. OK, perfect. <laughs> and then we have a few instruction home instruction tools. So you have your portal instructions. Um, there are paper forms um, and then the request to update home instruction records. So these will also be available at the close of our session. Due date for um, submitting home instruction um, requests will be September 1st. So those will be open all summer. Um, those would be for families um, filling out the forms. All right, we'll get into navigation. So in NEO, once you're there, you'll go into student data. You're going to home instruction, enter home instruction, view home instruction listings. So you have a few different things that you can navigate to. In order to have access to the home instruction module, you need to have a de an access request form submitted by your superintendent on your behalf. So you'll need to send that in um, and you'll need to, to be entered into staff in order to into your NEO staff portal by your business manager in order to be able to have that access granted. So you'll need access to student data in order to um, it will need to be requested in order to be able to be able to get in here. So here's what you would see when you first log into NEO. You have your student data screen uh, or your main screen. You'll click on student data. You have home instruction, enter home instruction. And then you have two different options here. One of them is complete a home instruction notice. That's where when you get documentation from a family that they have an intention to homeschool, you can enter that for them. Um, and then you have view home instruction students listing. 
This will give you access to the list of home instruction students um, who have already completed this form. This is what it looks like once you get into the home instruction students listing. You'll have options to drop down your district and select who um, you want to be looking at. Um, you'll be able to select status. You'll see student names listed um, in each of the columns, parent names, which district they're associated with, when the notice was submitted, and your school year and their status. Um, so you'll be able to navigate through those um, to get to, um, to view them, to edit them, update them, whatever you may need to do there. And so submitting a home instruction paper form, uh, paper forms can be in whichever modality uh, that you want them to be in. So um, parents could submit them on a napkin, we like to say. Um, it doesn't really matter how they're submitted, that as long as there is notice that they are going to be um, homeschooling their student. So if they do not fill it out online, there. this is how you would go in and update that student in the NEO module so that they would be reflected in your student list. So this is what you would be looking at. Um, the, there's no specific form, once again, that needs to be filled out in order for this to be completed. Um, parents can request the form from the office. Um, they should, you should always use the most recent document. Um, if a parent submits a document or letter of assessment to you, but it does not contain the required information to allow you to enter into the portable or portal, then you may want to try to find, uh, follow up with them. So if you don't have what you need to complete this section of the module, then you would want to reach out and ask them a few questions um, and get that information that you need. Um, if there is a refusal to submit the missing information, you would want to um, uh, submit the form um, to the office or call 624-6700. So get some uh, backup on that one to get some help. And then always keep an, a copy of the original notice of um, for your records, uh, no matter what that uh, form looks like keep it somewhere so that you have a record of when it was submitted, how it was submitted. Um, and so just keep that on file so that you can uh, go back to it if need be. For questions about this module about home instructions, uh, home instruction, please reach out to Pamela Ford Taylor. She's our school enrollment specialist. She's with us today. Um, and this is her email address and her phone number. And at this time, what we're going to do is we're going to have Pamela go through and uh, get into the module. She's staged a few students so that you can see it um, and see the new functionality that is available this year. So Pam, if you would like to share your screen, we can get that going. All right, I think you are up and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Thank you, Allie. Um, hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here and and tell you about our new functionality that um, has already generated a little bit of excitement. We we've been talking for a lot of years and I know um, a lot of you on here were already familiar with you know, sort of the basics. And if you're brand new, there's, um, I would urge you to go in and look at those resources on the NEO Home Instruction um, site. Uh, and you can always email me and I can sort of send you a little tutorial email um, that, that will help you get started and know about, you know, when to follow up on, uh, a, a notice of intent that's incorrect or, um, you know, all those kinds of things. But <clears throat> we wanted to be short on that part of the presentation today so that we could go a little bit more in depth, in depth about the new functionality. 
and um, so so this is this is more for you advanced users, <laughs> I'd say. And five or six of you have already, um, you know, emailed me and know about this new functionality. So let's get started. What what I sort of plan to do is kind of go through and um, I'm going to create a record and then we're going to kind of walk through the different things you can do with a, a, a created record and then um, you can see how that works. And please put questions in um, in in the Q&A if you have them. So this is this is the basic screen that you all are probably familiar with by now. Um, you've come in to the Neo site. You've you've logged on as yourself, um, and so you have access and you are the home instruction point of contact, which is uh, actually a required role in your office. So let's complete a home instruction notice. Let's go down here and this is what it looks like. I'm going to switch this right here to be for last year or for this current year because we're going to and, and I have something right in my way that's um, blocking me. So I'm going to say this is me. And I'm going to skip that and I'm going to put And then I'm going to say that I live at the Burton Cross building, which I used to. And that's, I'm going to put that right in Augusta. And then I will, oops, get rid of it later on. Oh, Allie, your face is so beautiful, but it's right in front of me. OK, there we go. And Augusta Public Schools. And I'm going to, um, as you know, we're required to choose uh, something to upload. So I'm going to just put this. And I'm going to say, there we go. And <clears throat> My child's name is going to be child and then Taylor. And I'm going to make this child 17 years old and a first year student. All right. So I'm going to submit that. Pam, and we yes, did I... have a quick question um, about an upload functionality and if that will be available at some point in the future. You know if there's been any talk of that? So there's, you just saw me upload a file. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but if you have access as the home instruction point of contact, then you have um, functionality to upload a file right here and in fact you're required to do so if you're entering a notice a paper notice does that answer your question i'm wondering if the question may be more geared toward um an upload like in synergy where you can upload and have the student's name directly from the local sis um and have no. it automatically go into this. Like if you had to do that manually, so wonder okay. if it would be automatic. So if if that is your question, this portal is absolutely disconnected from Synergy. So it's up to your SAU to keep that in sync. If you, if a student is is um, in home instruction, then the Synergy person must go into Synergy and exit to home instruction. And there are a lot of students in here that have never been to school, public school, so they're not going to have a Synergy record. Alright, I'm going to submit that and we can talk about that a little bit some more about syncing your current ones. Um, 
And what did it say? Oh, it said, please enter a start date, which I did not do. All right, so I'm going to say we started on 5 16 2023. Now I'm going to submit it. And yes, I am sure. All right, so now I'm going to go in there and I'm going to look at this. I'm going to select 2223 and just because it's a little faster, we're going to go into Augusta. OK, so now I can look up my child. Child Taylor. And it's right here. Now I have the option here to and and you will too if it's your um, your SAU. So if it's your SAU, you're going to see all three of these um, choices lit up and available for you to click. If it is not yours, you can now see all of the district's um, children, but you would not be able to ever uh, create uh, edit edit them or go in and drill down and actually look at that record. You can only see the list unless it's your um, your SAU. So from here, I'm going to say so. They sent me in a 2023-2024 one, and this might this might be useful for the previous questioner. Um, to this is a shortcut if you haven't encountered it and you're new to creating uh, a record for the immediate coming year. So, for instance, if I had made a record for 20. 21 2022 that create new link would not uh, allow me to create a new one for two years beyond or or any it gets turned off unless it's the immediate preceding year if that makes sense so but i have it now and i'm going to create it i'm going to create a new record for child because I got the other form and so it says 2023 2024 right there and it fills in everything for you except for the choose file files to upload we're going to go back and do that And then we're going to go down and complete. Now this child is going to be 18. And um, and we we since it's a subsequent year, we're going to need to put in an assessment for this student. And I'll say what it is and I'll choose the file to upload again. And we'll think about it for a little bit. And put the same one because I'm boring. All right. So you as you can see that significantly cuts down on your entry time for um, for submitting, you don't have to submit from scratch anymore. And now if we go in and we go into. Uh, well, let's just go into. Augusta. Public schools. And put in Taylor again. It remembered it and now there's going to be two child tailors. There's going to be a child tailor for 2022 and a child tailor for 2023. 
Now, at the end of 2020, the, 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 this coming school year, 2023-2024, Child Taylor is graduating. And so she's going to send an email in to um, the Augusta Home Instruction uh, point of contact and say, my child, here's my final assessment. My child is graduating. So we're going to have that assessment in hand and that email, which we're going to scan. And we want to go in and if we want to add that, we're going to add it to the last year because we don't want to create a new record just in order to um, uh, be able to record that that student is graduated. So we're going to put it in the 23-24 school year and right here we're going to attach the record right here to the choose files to upload and then we're going to put a note right here. We're going to say graduated. And uh, I usually put her parent, you know, email or whatever it is. And that note is going to be available for anyone to look at and it's going to update their record. If if there was an email, then I would probably scan it and um, I would attach that there and the assessment down here. Now there's a three file limit at the top, you may know, and there's a five file limit down here per child. So if you had four children across here, then you could upload up to five files each for that. Um, any questions or? We did have a question, Pamela, about the um, efforts to educate parents about using the portal, if there was anything that would be going on in that regard. Well, we have to remember that that the parent functionality is, is very different than the SAU functionality. So the SAU functionality, you can edit, you can um, put notes, you can you know, look up lists and, and all of that kind of stuff for your children. And you have, you know, your files, your, your actual physical files. The parent um, submission, they can't retrieve their last year's record. The only thing they can do is push the information through to the SAU. So um, really the only education is that they can't do it on their phone. We don't have that um, refined of a system here at the state that allows a mobile um, application for this. Not yet anyway. Um, I'm, I've, I've heard that that there may be in the future um, some better functionality around that. But um, so I'm thinking that there's probably not going to be any more of of a parent, uh, you know, uh, education on that simply because as long as they're using the right uh, the right kind of, you know, laptop and and all that kind of stuff. They really should have no problem. Well, I guess I have to add that you can't have any weird named very long. The, the system has a problem with very long names, so I have a little blurb on my standard. Uh, introduction to home instruction email that I send out to parents that says, you know, make sure you use a laptop, make sure that your file name isn't too long, make sure it's a PDF or a JPEG, um, that kind of thing. And I'm happy to send that little blurb out to anyone, you know, that wants to pass it along to, to your parents as well. So I'm going to go back to the listing and um, I have to kind of remind myself what other, well, okay. 
Oh, the one thing I did want to kind of go over is that when um, if if you have a duplicate that comes in, like say, you know, you put in a child record for 2023, but then also the parent did it at the same time. So you have two in there. Uh, how do you decide which one to keep? Um, and obviously, how do you delete it? So the the delete part of it is that you go in um, to the file with the edit function, and then right here, you have a delete function. You also have a delete function for just delete child. So if if I had another child in here, then you would be able to see delete child, delete child. So if this one was an error or, um, you know, some said, or it was a four year old child that wasn't eligible or something, I don't know what the circumstance would be, but you could delete just a child. Um, but normally you would delete the child registration form if it was a duplicate and you would do do that there. There is a warning here. If you if you're trying to delete a child, there isn't a warning on that one, but there's a warning here. So we're going to say, yep, we do want to delete the entire family record for child Taylor for this year. So. Um, However, let's go back into this one. If you had two and you, um, uh, let me see, what's a situation where, uh, at any rate, if 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 there's a need to update this file, the important thing to do is to make sure that you make a note here. So, um, uh, if if the parent corrected something on this, like it's not spelled child, it's spelled C H I D E, Chide Taylor, then you would correct that and and you would attach the authorization, which is the parent email that said, hey, you know, you need to correct this. And then you might make a note down here. Um, so anytime that you are manipulating and deleting files and, you know, gee, there's a duplicate, you want to always, always keep a record of what you've done. I often keep the file that the parent has put in. Um, and or I keep the earlier file that has been uh, submitted and or I also look at whether a file has a real date of birth or just an age because the date of birth is much more useful and gets retained year to year um, if, if we're looking for a child and wanting to match birth dates. Um, a, a child that's that's missing or lost or we don't know if it's the exact same child that we're um, trying to find. Um, let's see what else. Pamela, we had another question. I think this might be in regard to um, missing information on a document, um, but it says, can we use existing information from our student information system to enter a record if the parent only sends an email indicating home instruction and nothing else? So I think if missing information is there, but it can be found in the SIS, uh, can they use that to fill in the blanks? So that's a really good question. And, and we have determined that, so for instance, if they're missing a birth date or age um, and you have it on file already, absolutely yes. Um, but if it's if it's nothing but an email that says I, everything's on file, um, just use that information. I, I, I don't, I think we need a form 
for or or a letter or something that indicates that this person is the parent what's your name what's the child's name um, you know make sure of the year that they're indicating um, and so forth because sometimes there's a there's a fine line between we could make some errors in assuming things um, that that weren't intended. I think that's about all I have. I think um, I just want to kind of plant a seed. September 1st is the deadline for parents, but um, as folks know, home instruction can start at any time of the year. Um, and so, uh, you know, you can also, um, if a parent has an assessment due, but it is not provided uh, at when they first send in their form, they say, oh, I'm working on it. And when it comes in, I'm going to send it along. Um, you can enter that form and put a holding file up there and that says, um, you know, missing assessment or something that's entirely recognizable um, so that when that when that assessment does come in, you can just delete that holding file and attach the other, which is which is great. Now that you can edit, you can just, um, you know, scan that and and replace it. Um, the other thing the 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 thing that I kind of wanted to talk about, but this is not really the forum. Um, if if you're having questions about how to organize your um, your unit so that things are flowing and people are knowing about um, you know synergy versus uh, versus the home instruction portal and how you manage that together with the schools versus the superintendent because home instruction is handled entirely in the superintendent's office for the most part I mean under the law but a lot of times there are um, very different ways that a SAUs organize the rest of their um, uh, enrollment and you know putting codes into synergy and things like that. So um, so if anyone ever wants to, you know, discuss that or or has questions about that, um, I I I'm not in a school, but uh, sometimes folks share how they do things. And um, so that might be helpful. We had another question, Pamela, about um, letters and if there were any letters available on the website, uh, they want to be able to pass them on to parents. Uh, many of the documents that they've been seeing have been outdated uh, that parents are finding. Oh, uh, so if you're talking about a home instruction form, I'm, I'm assuming you are. There are, you know, other organizations in the state that kind of put out their own um, stuff and, and letters and things like that. Um, I would just, in your superintendent's office, I would just make sure that you have the latest copy of the home instruction form, the notice of intent to provide home instruction. That's up on our website, um, print it out. And, and, you know, and so if someone calls up or gives you or comes into the office, you can give them the latest form or you can um, mail them a PDF of it. Uh, that's the very best thing that I can do. Um, we can't force a parent to go on the portal because they might not have access to a computer or whatever. We also can't force them to use um, a particular form, but as long as we're making them aware of the 
things that we need, the information that we need, um, then that's the best we can do. And you had mentioned earlier, Pamela, that there are that you're willing to provide some language around instructions for accessing the portal for parents. Is that something that they can reach out to you for? Yeah, I, I, I'll send them the standard um, blurb that I send out with my when 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 parents ask me um, for information about home instruction. Happy to do that. And we had another question about uh, character limits on name fields. Is, do you know if there's any character limit in the module for name fields? Name fields? I don't. Um, there, there may be, you know, restrictions on spaces and characters, and but I don't know about character limit. Yeah, I'm not aware of character limits either. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe um, we can get that information for you. Yeah, I can ask around and see if there's anything like that. another one come in um, it says I think one issue that we run into is that families will submit the form for home instruction but will communicate with the school that they plan to still attend for a specific class it would be helpful to include the portal for the parent um, and a question that relates to that maybe so um, it sounds like if students are attending for art or phys ed or specials and things like that the uh, there's still some confusion around that. Um, and if we can get some guidance about that for parents. OK, and and. That is on our website, but I'm happy to send out there's an there's an actual statute that. Um, so a home instruction. Parent or, or student is allowed to leverage uh, a public school. And the public school simply in synergy puts them in in quarter increments. So if they're attending, you know, three classes as a high school student, then they would probably be a 0.5. Um, and so they're there. We don't call it partial homeschooling because you're either in homeschool or you're not, but they can. Um, do classes at the at the public school if they have permission and you know follow the rules. And I'm happy to send out that statute statutory language again if you um, just shoot me an email. And it looks like there's a follow up question to our names um, question or it's not really a question, but uh, there have been some issues with longer names um, and being entered into the fields. Uh, so we'll have to we'll have to look into that. We'll get more information about fields and what a, uh, what the character limits are that are available for those. Yeah, OK, I hadn't heard that that problem before. So yeah, that's really yeah, good definitely. to know. We don't have any more questions right now, but we can kind of hang out for a second until we start to see some people drop off. Um, and we, if you have questions later on, feel free to send them to Pamela. Yeah, well, while we're hanging, I just want to. Um, I just want to say thank you for attending and how grateful I am for um, all your attention and and. Uh, you know, learning about all these new things and I, I know folks are really excited to be able to see the statewide list. And to be able to do their their own editing and so forth. But along with that, 
um, I know that you will have questions and as always, uh, I'm totally available to uh, to work with you on any specific problems that you have. We had another um, comment come in that sometimes I get nothing but an out, out, uh, an automated email from the state with no other information, but they have enrolled and no names or contacts, just an email address. Oh, yes, that's a frequent sort of um, complaint or just bad thing. <laughs> we. Uh, the state can't put any um, specific information into uh, a response email or an acknowledgement um, because it would be a FERPA violation. So essentially, it until someone tells us differently, the the acknowledgements have to stay that way. And my philosophy is it's better that they get something that alerts them than nothing at all. Um, even though it's 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 not the most useful uh, email. <laughs> we can wait for a few more questions to come in. I see we've dropped a few attendees, but still quite a few are with us. We've had some really great questions today. Yes, indeed. All right, our numbers are starting to drop, so we will um, let everyone get back to their Tuesday. Um, thank you all for joining us. The recording of this will be available by end of day tomorrow, potentially today. I'll do my best. Um, and we will have the Q&A published so that you can see any answers to those questions. Uh, you'll have access to the slideshow and um, also, once again, that recording. Uh, any questions about home instruction that you want to follow up after this uh, webinar, please feel free to reach out to Pamela Ford Taylor. Um, her information is here. And we will see you potentially next week with our next webinar. Have a great day, everyone. Have a good one. Bye bye.